Let's start things off by taking a look at Houdini's interface. Right here in the middle, we have our viewport. And to move around, hold down Alt and left click to tumble. Alt middle will pan and Alt right will zoom. Now, if we want to populate our viewports with certain things, we need to create nodes. As a matter of fact, Houdini is based around nodes. Anything you do, well, pretty much anything you do, is based off of a node that you create. And in order to create those nodes, we use this bottom right section right here. This is our node graph, or sometimes you'll hear it called the network editor as well. And if we press tab, you'll notice that we have all of these different nodes that we can create that will populate our scene. So I can browse for whatever I like just by doing this, or I can also start typing a keyword. Here I will type sphere, and I can left click this right there, or I can also press enter, and if I click again, it will create that node, and we have a sphere. Now you'll notice that once this node is highlighted, above it, the parameters now are active. And so these parameters relate to the node that was created right here. And these are basically like the settings that are related to that node. In this case, if I wanted to, let's say, move this in the X direction by one unit, I could type one. And there you go. We've moved our sphere by one. Now, while we're here, I want to show you something interesting about Houdini. Watch what happens when I double click this node. You'll notice that we actually just entered inside of that sphere node and we have the sphere one. This sphere one is actually where the sphere lives. It's actually what creates the sphere that you see here. And if I go back to this object level, you'll notice that it's kind of like a, a path, like a file path. We have the object and we're inside sphere one right now. If I go back to object, this geometry node that was created is basically acting like a container. So the sphere that we see here isn't actually this node. This is the container for the node right here. Now, if we want to rename this, simply just click on the text and let's call this one sphere, oops, sphere container because that's what it's doing. It's just acting like a container for the sphere. So the reason why it's set up like this is because when we press tab, we're going to get nodes specific to that particular context that we're in. So when I press tab and I see all of these nodes that we can use, these nodes relate to the object context right here. And if I go inside this geometry container, the nodes that I see here relate to the things that apply to objects within a geometry container. And so that's one reason why we see this structure like this. Uh, another reason why is because it helps you keep a, a more organized workspace as you're going through. If we have lots of different objects, it's just pretty nice to keep them all in different containers. Another thing that I'd like to show you is what these little colored tabs mean on the node. You'll notice that as we hover over the node, we have these little options that appear, and these options control various things. So here we have our visibility, this little eye icon, which makes sense. We can also click the blue tab on the node itself. Up on the top left, we have whether or not that uh, this node is selectable in the viewport. So if we turn this off, we cannot select the sphere anymore. But if we turn it on, we can select it. And then we also have this info node. And this info node gives us details about the you know, transform order. It just gives us miscellaneous things. If we wanted to, uh, ha let's say, add our own commentary, like, hey, this is Tyler. We could type it in right there, and people can see this if they open the file later on. We can also show the comment in the network. So that's pretty cool. And that's what the info tab does. Let's go inside of the geometry container now. And you'll notice that sphere one has a different set of options because we are now inside the geometry container. Now, real fast, I'm going to create a box over here. 
And you'll notice that as I created the box, we don't see it in the viewports. That's because my visibility flag is set to the sphere right now. If I want to set that to the box, I can go like that, and that will control the visibility. Now what I'm going to do is drop down a transform node. And what I'll do is move this, let's say, two units in X. So we have that, and we can see that it's transformed. If I set my visibility back to the box, you'll notice that we actually see this little x ray outline of the transform because that is what's visible in our parameters, or that's what's loaded with our parameters. If we wanted to, let's say, see the outline of the sphere, you'll notice that as I highlight the sphere, now its outline is showing because the parameters are loaded. But let's say that we have our box here and I still want to see where the sphere's location is. I can go here to the sphere and I can click this little template icon. And what this will do is it'll show us the outline of that sphere even if we don't have any of that selected. So it'll still give us the outline even though the parameters are not loaded. In addition to the templates and the visibility icons, we also have this yellow bypass which will disable the node. We also have our info, show us info about the geometry as it is at this point right here. And also we can always add commentary, just like at the object level. You'll also notice that at the bottom left, we have this little frozen icon. And what this will do is it will basically bake whatever is happening here in the node graph to that spot. So whenever Houdini generates what you see in the viewport, it takes a top-down approach. It first thinks about this box, and then it thinks about any nodes underneath that until it's reached our transform. Well, what this frozen icon will do is it will prevent Houdini from ever going up and trying to recalculate what's above this. So if I want to go change the box, for instance, you'll notice that I might be able to change it with this little preview outline, but in all reality, it's not actually changing the box that's drawn here because we've frozen it. In other words, this is not going to show us anything that's changed above it because it's locked at this point. So in addition to that, we also can use this lock icon to share files. Anything that's been locked actually gets saved out to the HIP file itself. So this also gets used whenever you're trying to share a file with somebody and maybe not rely on external files that that person might need to view something in the viewport with. Anyway, it's a very specific thing that you would use this lock for, but that's what it does. So anyway, I just wanted to show you what those little ticks mean. Uh, there's one last thing I want to mention. There's this little purple inner circle right here. And that purple inner circle tells us what is going to be rendered. So let's say that I want the box to be rendered, but I currently want to be viewing the sphere. I'm going to turn off the template. But whenever I hit render, I want it to render the box. So I'm going to hold down control, and I'm going to select this very right hand side right here. And by doing that, it now has set the sort of purplish sphere, or like purplish uh, highlight to the box, meaning that at render time, it'll render this, but in our viewport, we see this. That all being said, let's check out the shelf now. Up top here, we have our shelf, and our shelf basically acts like a, a shortcut, or a, a way to create nodes in a convenient way. If I want to create a camera, I could go down to this node graph here and just start typing camera and press enter and there you go, I have a camera. Or I can go up here to the shelf, click camera, and you'll notice that I have a set of instructions down here. It says select position for camera, hold shift to move off the construction plane. So I'm just going to click once out here and that also created a camera but it created that camera with these parameters filled in. So in a way, these shelf tools are nice because 
it not only creates nodes, but it also oftentimes creates these nodes with preset parameters or parameters that you can determine by interacting with the viewport. So this is the shelf up here. Beyond cameras, we can also do things with effects. So let's say you wanted a default fiery explosion. You could do that right there and it'll create a bunch of nodes. And to the bottom here, we also have our animation timeline. So whenever we create keyframes for things, we'll see these keyframes show up at our timeline. And at the very bottom over here, you'll notice that we have this little window icon with a cursor over it. And this is where we will find our global animation options. So whenever you're starting a project, you want to double check what your frames per second is, as well as your time range, just to make sure that you have enough frames to work with and that you are in the correct frames per second. All of that stuff is held here in the global animation options. To the left here, we also have our transform tools. So if I want to select things, I can select them just like that. If I want to move, I can use this move tool and move the sphere like that. Same with rotating and scaling. We can do all of that. And we're going to talk a little bit more about these transform tools uh, in a separate lesson. But just for right now, know that they live over here. We also have these snapping tools right here, which I will show you later. On the right hand side, we have various lighting options for our viewports, and this controls the way objects are lit only in our viewports. For the most part, you're not going to see any difference right now because we haven't made any lights, but these are basically low quality, mid quality, high quality presets. And also right here, we can display things like points and normals and things related to information about the geometry. Also, I'm going to show you a bit more of that in detail later on. But these are the main sections of the Houdini interface, and it's really pretty simple once you know where things are. In the next lesson, we're going to be starting with our own new project. And, you know, I think it's best just to dive into doing something really cool. I think that when you just start with something and just make something cool, that you'll learn a lot about the application along the way.